What's going on my broskies? My name is Toadski back again here to bring you guys yet another One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Today we are here with my own personal teams for this upcoming treasure map versus Kanjuro. Uh, of course I've already made previous videos about free to play teams as well as more accessible teams that utilize characters that are not from recently released batches but still include some rare recruits and some legend characters. If you guys want to go ahead and check them out I'll leave them down below in the video description so you guys can go ahead and peep that for yourself. But in this video we're going in with my own personal team. So so this is after the fact that we've done our pulls. Unfortunately, the pulls didn't really go as planned. So if you guys want to go ahead and check that out, also check out the pulls on the YouTube channel. But let's jump into the uh, the actual team builds today. So we're going to be jumping in with the first team, which of course is going to be versus X Drake. Now I have not filled it out with all of the supports yet. I'm just going to be showing you guys the, uh, the 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 key supports that are very useful for this team. So this is going to be using Buggy. I typically haven't opted to use Buggy for any of these fights before, but I'm opting to do it this time around just to see how it kind of goes and depending on how the treasure map continues I may actually switch some of these up because if there's a certain fight that I can always fight in the treasure map I may actually switch up that fight to particularly be a buggy team I'm not 100% sure yet and of course if this wasn't already known I am mainly focusing on running speed teams to ensure that I'm getting through the fights as quick as possible and dumping all of my highest point boosters on the intrusion and the final boss fight just to make it so that all of of my treasure map runs are completed a lot faster than running just a full point boosted team. Now I know this is not the strategy that everyone would like to adopt but this is what I'm opting for and I think it should work okay. So for this one here of course versus X Drake we're running double buggy and in this instance here we have to deal with paralysis and bind. Uh, in terms of the bind we can completely get rid of it with, with the ace support on Luffy and we are doing as much damage as we possibly can via the special ability of Big Mom. And she's going to be really good here for outputting a pretty serious amount of damage. If we do need extra damage, we're going to be using Luffy for a health cut and then use Big Mom. Or we could just use Kaido Special as well, which does like 300 times his attack. He hits really, really hard. Um, also, we do have the uh, Arena Caesar, which is enabling us to kill the first two stages with two special activations due to double special activation. So those are the strategies that I'll be adopting for this strategy against X-Drake. Moving on now to the next team, this is going to be versus who's who. Once again, really opting for speed, so we're going to be using Legend and Nell as the captain, and by enabling to use him as the captain, we can just one tap with him for the first two stages, it's going to completely wave clear, won't have to worry about that. And then for the final boss room, we have to deal with, again, like five turns of bind for our top row characters. We have to deal with special bind, which is why we have the Monkey D. Luffy character, and to get a full board of matching slots we can use the special ability of Bon Clay. We also have VV support attached to Bon Clay so that when we use the special of that unit we can get a color affinity boost for our free spirit characters which in this instance here would be Zoro, Bon Clay and Luffy. Now of course uh, NL is actually not a boosted unit here and he doesn't actually get the cooldown from this quest either because he's not one of the classes that do receive the cooldown. So we're not worrying about using his special for color affinity as awesome as it would be. So we're just using him but just mainly as the cap to kind of get through the stages. You could definitely go for treasure map NL instead, but using this NL is going to give us more damage output, obviously. Uh, so again, definitely opting for speed. I don't know how optimal this is going to be, but in theory, it should be relatively okay. So now we move on to Sasaki. Now for this team here, we're going to be using Kaido Crew as the captain. They're a really good unit in treasure map. It is kind of strange how they do it that way, right? Where they have a legend that comes out for treasure map being Bon Clay who's actually really good for Kizuna and then they have a Kizuna legend in Kaido crew who's very good for treasure map I don't know why they structured it in such a way but either way, uh, the really good thing about Kaido Crew, of course, is you can use their switch effect uh, as a captain, because when they're, when they're the captain, their, their super switch will be active from turn one. So when you use their switch, they'll get the super switch effect, which does AoE damage, and it just will wipe the floor, as well as fully max charging their special ability. So that's going to be great, because we can use that on the final stage to do absurd amounts of damage, while ideally switching into our quick form, which is going to give us type advantage against Sasaki. In terms of getting around attack down, we have the Rob Lucci, Getting around the Paralysis, we have Beppo. Beppo also gives us a full board of matching slots, but we also have the Rebecca support on Rob Lucci, which actually gives us a 1.3 attack boost for our... 
uh, quick characters, which is pretty nice. Um, obviously, we're going to be using the Kaido Crew Special, which gives us a really good amount of damage. And the fact that we do have a full team of powerhouse units means that we get the activated effect of the Kaido Crew Captain, which will do end of turn damage, which enables us to get around the resilience buff that Sasaki will typically apply here. And then we do have a couple of boosted units in the Smoothie Oven as well as Olin. Just, you know, some boosted powerhouse units to just kind of fit the team. Nothing really overly special here. Kaido Crew heavily carrying for this fight, enabling us to speed farm it pretty efficiently. Now we're going ahead and moving on to Black Maria, which is uh, definitely one of the more tricky boss fights that we've seen recently. Now, I am opting for a full booster team here because we can just kind of do it, and it's not going to be that bad. Now, ideally, we're killing the turtle stage normally. For stage two, though, I think it's Rody and BB. Um, they actually have a special ability that does some AoE damage. Yeah, 100,000 fixed damage to all enemies. So we're going to be abusing that on stage two to just wave clear that stage. And then on the final boss stage, we actually get given an attack and an all boost. It's like a 1.3 attack and all boost, but we also get given the spare so we can actually use uh, roger and newgate to use their effects to um buff whatever attack and orb boost we have to become a three times boost and they will also get rid of the despair when we launch their special so it actually works pretty effectively here and then the rest of the units are basically just filler right like it's nothing special we can also use the switch effects of roger and newgate to just give us some more matching slots uh, it's again as i said nothing really too crazy uh or full boosted team we we're using cat viper as well just because he's a higher boosted unit that we can kind of just slot on the team considering the entire team are slasher characters so that's going to be our team versus black maria nothing really too exciting uh and it's not the fastest team that we have but it should be efficient enough to get through it pretty efficiently because it does have such a powerful captain in roger and newgate which can get up to like a 5.5 times attack whatever it is 5.25 it's just a stupid value that you can get to and i don't think black maria with this team is going to be that difficult so now we can finally move on to the final boss versus ulti in page one. Now this fight is just so, so annoying. Uh, not having any of the point boosters obviously sucks, but it is what it is. Now we are opting to use Dogstorm as the captain. Now this is a pretty odd choice. I didn't want to do it, but considering, you know, the space that we have on our team, I kind of had to resort to this. And this will enable us to just completely ignore the damage threshold that's applied on the final boss stage of ulti in page one. Plus, Dogstorm have a pretty good special. We can use their special on stage two get an attack boost and then on the next stage if we hit those two perfects we can get the orb boost for strength decks and quick characters namely you know perospero as well as the friend captain Izo and okiku will be receiving that orb boosting effect and then we can use that we have the special ability of Izo and okiku to um get the chain lock for multiple turns which means that we will have eventually an orb lock or an orb orb boost and a chain lock at the same time so we can actually use their super type special but we have the applicable units to do that anyway we have uh the odin of course who's going to be a really nice addition to the team which can give us either a color affinity boost or an attack boost we have the attack down removal via the ashura doji character so this is a team that i hope should be able to get through it without too many qualms but at the same time i am kind of worried uh about it just a couple things as well i just hope that it runs efficiently not the highest point boosting team in the world but i think I think it's about as good as I'm personally going to get. So that's going to be my team versus Zalti in page one. And now we move on to Kanjuro. Now, once again, this is also one of the reasons why we have to use Dogstorm as the captain once again, is the defensive effects that the enemy is applying. So on the stage two, we have to deal with Rainbow and Blue Shield. So luckily, getting getting rid of the Blue Shield is not really a big problem. We have Hyogoro for that. But the Rainbow Shield, there's not many good units that we can use on this team that actually remove that. So we're going to be using Dogstorm once again to just bypass that without too many issues. And then we have Kanjuro on the final boss stage, which applies a very significant health cut to our team and then obviously when you kill him he does a pretty significant death hit it's like 80,000 damage death hit so Odin's going to be able to block that which is great in terms of the chain lock once again we're going to be using Izo and Okiku as a friend count and use their special stage 2 to get that uh, orb or chain locking effect so we can carry it into the final boss stage as well which enables us to get around the chain lock on stage 3 and then the special binding effects we have the the uh what's his face kawamatsu kawamatsu is going to be able to remove some of that and then we also have the support of riser as well as the uh perispero with the support of sweet commanders is going to be able to remove that too also any specials that we use on stage two i think like izo and okiku can generate some wano slots for us we can actually use the perispero special on stage two because he actually gives himself reduced cooldown at the start of the quest he gives himself a yeah, minus 11 so he's going to be ready as soon as we enter the boss fight um because he actually doesn't receive cooldown naturally 
purely from the Kanjuro fight. So we can use that on stage two to lock whatever slots we get. So that's going to be pretty awesome to just to keep some of the Wano slots that we move on to the next stage for. So that's going to be really, really nice to have. And uh, yeah, we'll see how things go. And of course, if any of these teams end up changing throughout the duration of the treasure map, I'll bring you guys a video showing what I'm doing. But at the moment, these are going to be my current teams moving forward for this upcoming treasure map versus Kanjuro. So with all that being said, that is going to conclude this One Piece Treasure Cruise video. Thank you very much for watching. And if you guys did enjoy the video, make sure you go ahead and leave a like. And if you want to stay up to date with all of the content that I post, including more One Piece Treasure Cruise content, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below. But on that, guys, I'll see you guys within the next video.